All right, we're going to get started. Good evening. Thank you for coming and joining us tonight for the great debate. Uh, it's a new program we've started here at the Aspen Art Museum in the hopes of elevating the space of thought and exchange in our community. I understand there's some other things uh, people could have been doing tonight, so we're glad that you're here mm -hmm. instead of learning about the history of Aspen or, um, I don't know, whatever else people are doing anywhere else around here. So I'm Heidi Zuckerman. I'm the Nancy and Bob Magoon CEO and director. Huh. And actually, Bob Magoon passed away yesterday, so this is the first time I have had to... Uh, say that, so, um, but I'm sure he's with us in spirit. Um, I'm thrilled to be welcoming such a wonderful panel for the second iteration of our program. Um, tonight, the debate is about, is the local more important than the global? So before we introduce the format and our speakers, I want to say thank you to um, Alan and Kelly Questrom, who fund the Questrom Education Series, and they make programs like this free to our um, public. So, and I also appreciate the speakers for giving some forethought to the program. I also want to thank Aspen Public Radio and Allison Berklesch for moderating the event. Allison will provide the introductions to our speakers and then outline the format of how the speakers uh, will deliver their arguments and then it will be turned over to you all to pose questions and then ultimately vote on which side made the best argument. So Allison is the interim news director at Aspen Public Radio and has won numerous awards for her reporting from the Society of Professional Journalists. We like awards here at the Aspen Art Museum. Um, thank you in advance for everyone's respectful participation. And without further ado, let us begin. Welcome. Is this working enough for everyone to hear? Think locally, act globally. Although this phrase has been in use for over 100 years, Waves of industrialization and globalization put our interpretation of the balance between the local and the global into question. In fact, this very topic became a driving force of the recent presidential debates and has dominated our own Aspen political landscape for much longer. It is safe to assume that every one of us in this room have had conversations at times heated about the delicate dynamics of the local and the global. For the second round of the great debate, we return to the format of the Oxford Union style of debate. Originating in the 19th century at Oxford University, this style presents a controversial proposition, invites experts to argue for and against the motion, and includes audience participation and voting as a critical component. Our proposition tonight is, is the local more important than the global? Arguing for the proposition that local is more important than the global are Ed and Vardy and Becky Hart to my right here. Ed and Vardy is the founder and executive director of Aspen Tree, a local nonprofit that connects children and the community to nature and their food systems and solves global climate challenges through local food production and education. Vardy is also the managing director of the Two Forks Club, a group that makes 0% interest loans to local farmers and food entrepreneurs. In addition, he is the permaculture professor at Colorado Mountain College. He holds a Master of Science in Integrative Eco-Social Design and a Bachelor's Degree in Sustainable Food Systems. Welcome, Edin. Thank you. 
Becky Hart is the Vicki and Kent Logan Curator of Modern and Contemporary Art at the Denver Art Museum. Previously, she served as the Associate Curator and Department Head of Contemporary Art at the Detroit Institute of Arts. A champion of new regionalism, she was a consultant for Take Another Look at Detroit and presented the paper Finding Here and Everywhere at the College Art Association annual meeting. She holds a BA of Art History from Williams College, a BFA in Fiber from Kansas City Art Institute, an MFA from Cranbrook Academy of Art, and a Master's in Art History from Wayne State University. Hi, Becky. Okay, arguing against the proposition that local is not more important than global are Nancy Lovendahl and Steve Skadron. Nancy Lovendahl is an artist who has been awarded residencies, visiting artist programs, and teaching opportunities nationwide. Her work has been shown nationally and internationally at galleries and museums, and is in public and private collections, such as the Smithsonian, the American Embassy in Belize, and the Kermick Museum in Vestival, Germany. She's the founder of the Claudette Carter Art Mentors Program, the Art Base, and a founding member of the Basalt Public Art Commission. Hi, Nancy. Steve Skadron is the mayor of Aspen, a role that he has served in since June 2013. He previously served six years as a member of the Aspen City Council and is principal of Spooner Skadron LLC, a marketing communications firm he founded in 20, 2003. He serves as an adjunct professor at Colorado Mountain College's Isaacson School of New Media and as the president of the Colorado Association of Ski Towns. He is a graduate of the University of Minnesota and holds an MBA from Northeastern University in Boston. Please join me in welcoming our panelists. I will now invite our speakers to deliver a five-minute argument that they've prepared. Once they've outlined their arguments, the discussion will be opened up to you, the audience, to, pro to pose questions, enhance the debate for 25 more minutes. At the conclusion, we will take a vote and release the winner. Speaking for the proposition, Ed and Barty, and you have five minutes. Everything starts local. Humanity, culture, decision making, and economics all start from a local point and go out from there. The beginnings of civilizations did not pop up in multiple places simultaneously. Something about a particular place in one part that allowed for life to start, for civilization to take root. Thousands of years later, we have civilization everywhere, but the fact that civilization, life, and everything else started local first, and then it can go global. So the argument of whether local is more important is indisputable, given that you can have local without global, but you cannot have global without local. Ecologically, animals, plants, fungi, and bacteria respond more dramatically to what happens on a hyper-local level than to what happens or what is happening regionally or globally. Subtle changes in local temperatures change everything. In sustainable agriculture, a field that I'm regularly involved, we are hyper aware of extremely localized climate differences, or what we call microclimates. The difference of planting a crop or raising an animal within just a few feet can mean the difference of survival. Species respond to hyper local differences in soil texture, water absorption, and ground and air temperature. A south facing versus an east facing slope, or planting around a collection of, wa of naturally warm rocks off of a hillside that reflects uh, light from a pond, or in an area that naturally holds air temperatures for a longer period of time, can mean the difference of something surviving or not, as well as the ability to grow something like Mediterranean fruits in a temperate region, even in the cold altitudes like we have here. It also could mean the difference of animals surviving without supplemental heat, and these hyper-local observations and modifications make the global rules of growing regions relatively irrelevant when we're looking at sustainable agriculture. Locally grown food is a completely different animal altogether from global. Uh, I was involved in some rigorous studies that measured nutrient density differences, and we observed almost a 90% uh, increase in nutrient density of locally compared to co commercially or globally grown foods uh, on a regular basis. Uh, up to 25% differ differences were observed in nutrient density of food that was harvested just five hours before compared to food that was harvested and tested right away. And the locally grown tomato, if you've eaten one, tastes nothing like a globally grown tomato. <laughs> 
if you translate the nutrient density requirements of animals, they simply wouldn't survive if, if their diet was, uh, was restricted to food that was not locally grown. In terms of economics, a dollar spent locally has a quantifiable multiplier effect. A dollar spent locally returns at least twice as much to the local community as a dollar spent in a chain or a global purveyor. Uh, in addition to that, close to 75% more contributions to local charities come from a local, local serving business than a global serving business. So we would probably not even be able to be here tonight in the local serving F and Art Museum if we were prioritizing global over local. Local employment is substantially increased from local serving businesses, and local services and taxes are substantially increased in compared to uh, those coming from global purveyors. In terms of decision making and policies, people respond and are more likely to follow local rules than global ones based on consideration for what their neighbor thinks rather than what the federal government thinks. And in terms of true change, global policies would have no value if it wasn't for local action. What makes the work that individuals like our mayor, Steve Skadron, so impactful and meaningful to our community is the fact that he brings it here to our local community and impacts the change on a local scale that we can see and that we can experience. People respond to what they see, hear, smell, taste, and ultimately experience in their backyard, in their local environment. Therefore, local is more important than global. came in under five minutes, I will cut them off if they go over. Arguing against the proposition that local is not more important than global, next is Nancy Levendahl. You have five minutes. I guess I'm taking this from a very different perspective. I appreciate what you had to say. Thank you so much. Um, my impulse is that it's impossible to have the local without the global or the global without the local. We develop because of both. We need both. We are both. It's our nature. This is as evidenced in quantum physics. Thoughts are energy. Energy is form. Form is everywhere, affecting all. Um, a great example of this is when you walk into a room and everyone's in hysterical laughter. You don't know the joke, but you walk in and you catch it. That's the kind of energy I'm talking about. Another example is chaos theory, the butterfly effect. When I flap my wings, oh, thank you, Linda. When I flap my wings in my old Snowmass studio, it affects the creative conditions in Berlin. Another example is Einstein's equations of critical mass as illustrated in The Hundredth Monkey. So how is it that I work alone in a room for 30 years, I go on a trip to Los Angeles, and I walk in, and I see the same work that came out of what I thought was my unique brain. There is no such thing. So a perfect exa example of what I want to say that sort of sums it up was said by Ramana Maharshi, a very great sage of the 19th century in India, and it goes like this. Many people know that the wave becomes the ocean, but few know that the ocean becomes the wave. So, I am a local artist, I am a global artist. What I do locally has been affected by what's in the global conscious creative perspective and what I make in my studio feeds the collective. That's how I feel and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> All right, so Aspen comes out of an amazing cultural bed bedrock that's been developing over the last hundred years really. Um, and now is the only time that the Aspen Art Museum could really become what it has become today. I mean, look at what Heidi and her team has accomplished here with such incredible support from all of her national and global constituencies with great, great shows. Critical mass for culture has never been more mainstream. Arts economies are building communities in a way never seen before. A new focus 
um, that I find very interesting has come from Carolyn Ramo. She's the new executive director of Artadia, formerly an A-lister in the New York gallery scene. And currently, um, Artadia is a funding agency for artists, so she's traveling very far outside of the um, you know, main art centers. And her head has been spinning because she has been blown away by how many artists are in what she calls the peripheral position in the art world. People like ones that are working in this valley, people that are working that she f has discovered are immensely talented and are contributing in a dynamic way to a new conversation that's being embrace, um, embraced by many, many people. So reflecting on that, it gives me some insight into the idea that it couldn't be a better time to be a, a curator if you could trust that what's in your own backyard is not only in your diaspora you're looking at globally, but it's also reflected in the local as the global. So in other words, it's never been a better time to be an artist out of the mainstream because it's also physically easier to be connected because of today's technology and social media. I am, as I said before, contributing to the whole. The whole is contributing to me. The global to studio to global cycle is very nourishing, but there's one lack. It's very difficult to be an artist outside the mainstream because it's very difficult to develop person-to-person -person relationships with galleries and museums. So my interest now is to take an idea forward in how there can be a win-win between the Aspen Art Museum and regionally based artists. Thank you, Nancy. Next up, arguing for the proposition that local is more important as Becky Hart. Thank you. To be relevant to any audience, art needs to be connected to the local, to shared values, histories, and relationships. Inherent in the notion of local is the idea of place, a landscape or a city that we know from the inside. It's resonant with the familiar and the known. It's intertwined with memory and mystery. Place is longitudinal and latitudinal within the map of a person's life. It is temporal and spatial, personal and political. We live in a world where there is a sense of connectedness through rapid communication and relative ease of transit. It's possible to imagine that this world is global. But philosophers like Kwame Appiah posit that the larger uh, sense of connectedness the global imaginary is a sense of belonging that cannot be realized without geographic location, without being rooted somewhere, without being local. When we look at a work of art, we look for an authentic voice, a vision, an aesthetic, a subject that resonates with us, resonates with who we are. Um, maybe it's uh, Moonrise East July, uh, Ugo Rodinoni's Man in the Moon sculpture out on the corner. It links myth and art to explain the waxing and the waning of the moon. It links ancient moon worship to contemporary digital life. And it's here, it's in Aspen, it's local. As Americans, we want to know what's over the hill, what's next, what's unknown. It, that was true also of modernism, and the quest for the new inflects contemporary creative practice. Yet discovering content depends on memory, on continuity, on linking to place, on the local where there are shared values and experience. Speaking of place, Herman Melville in Moby Dick wrote, place is not on a map, true places never are. Our sense of local, of place, is shaped through, through our experiences, our direct experiences with them our understanding of history that it embodies, and the, our interactions across a changing social and cultural landscape. Finding place fulfills the need to belong to shared histories, narratives that articulate relationships between the teller and the told, the here and the there, 
the present, and the past. In absence of a common past, these narratives are ascribed heightened authority. Each of us finds meaning in art when we connect with, that we connect with, art that expresses ideas and tells stories, narratives that enrich our shared lives. Stories make the outsider feel welcome. They expand a small world. They create connectedness, community. Community is elusive, especially now. It's a fragile construct that allows difference, and it is elastic as relationships and change and evolve. It's about being good neighbors. Sometimes created spaces based on dissimilarity, like Aspen, can be more vital and less isolating than chosen ones, like the place we were born. Art critic Lu Lucy Lepard in The Lure of the Lo Local explored the possibilities for place-based art that has both roots and reach, and that honors local ho histories and mores. More recently, re reviewing Pacific Standard Time, Roberta Smith coined the term regional cosmopolitanism, art that finds root in a specific location and shared experience, a local art, but art that also connects to wider ideas and experience that echoes and enriches another place. The, to be cosmopolitan is to be familiar and at ease with difference, with different countries, different cultures. This new framing of, of regionalism is all American progressive social realism, not the regionalism of the WPA, which is often considered in pejorative terms. There is a difference between global art hub, hubs and local scenes. Others know what the hub is up to, but the hub, or, hub never knows what we're up to. Some argue that there's no such thing as re regionalism in our homogenized, peripatetic, electrically connected culture where everyone has access to the hub. The ease of travel and communication offers the possibility to shift away from global art capitals to more local, culturally, and gra geographically specific scenes. The larger global world is not home. A sense of belonging cannot be realized without a locally without being locally attached. Great, thank there you. There is Becky. no global. Your time is up. I'm sorry, you didn't quite get it through there. <laughs> I'll take the microphone away. And finally, uh, Mayor Steve Skadron speaking against the proposition. Yeah, thank you. Uh, is the local more important than the global? I emphasize three points: vagueness, small things and common humanity. Number one, the notion of local is vague. To paraphrase Professor Delia Graf Farah, if you take a, mount, take a mountain of snow, if you remove a single snowflake, it remains a mountain of snow. Remove enough snowflakes, however, and you have a mountain of snow that contains, say, one snowflake. This is absurd. One snowflake is not a mountain of snow. Either there is a precise number of snowflakes, at which point a mountain of snow becomes a non-mountain of snow, or there's no such thing as a mountain of snow. This paradox applies not just to snowflakes, but also to being local. Since there's not a precise point at which global becomes local, or local becomes global, there's no such thing as exclusively local. We want to take seriously the importance of local, but the boundaries that distinguish local are debatable at best and maybe impossible to understand. Locally, I vote for a president. He or she changes policy that affects global immigration. Clearly, when I go to vote, it's a local action, but its impact is global. Only when there's a common humanity that allows us to set a standard do local actions become global, and only when there's a global standard to define it as significant. The only reason that local actions amount to anything is because there's a global standard that defines them. Without the global, local action has no meaning. Number two, local suggests that small things in a complex system have a massive effect. The reality is that small things in a complex system have a massive effect or no effect at all, and it's virtually impossible to know which will turn out to be the case. Quoting Ben Franklin, 
For want of a nail, the horseshoe was lost. For want of a horseshoe, the horse was lost. For want of a horse, the rider was lost. For want of a rider, the battle was lost. For want of a battle, the kingdom was lost. And all for the want of a horseshoe nail. The battle was lost because the warrior never made it there because he didn't have a horse to ride, because the horse didn't have a horseshoe, because the horse didn't have a nail. The lack of one horseshoe nail could be inconsequential, or it could, be, it could indirectly cause the loss of a war. The effect local has on global is virtually impossible to know. Number three, common humanity. The notion of localism carried to its logical end is the individual. New York Times columnist David Brooks recently wrote that the line between good and evil runs through each person and we fight injustice on the basis of our common humanity. Ultimate manif manifestation of localism is the politics of libertarianism, which says that actions should not be made with reference to a larger system, that you have no responsibility for anybody else and nobody for you, and it's solely your responsibility for the outcome. Societies where it's everybody for themselves are abject failures. The notion of common humanity, not individual, enables civilizations to move forward. Of course, some local things are better. Aspen. <laughs> Food. Local art versus mass-produced art without a sense of time or place. But when considering local versus global, it's clear that global gives meaning to local actions. Therefore, since there's not a precise point at which global becomes local or local becomes global, and because the effect local has on global is virtually impossible to know, and because global gives meaning to local actions, I conclude local is not more important than global. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. We are now going to open it up to audience participation. I'm already so excited for the vote. We'll get there. Um, one thing I want to point out as you are listening to these arguments is that when we, when we do vote, you're going to be voting for the person who made the most compelling argument, not what you thought when you walked in the door, not who your best friends are, who's making the most compelling argument. So keep that in mind as you listen to the answers. We will now open it up to audience participation in the Oxford style of debate. That audience participation must be posed as a question. So if you have a question, you'll raise your hand. Rachel Manning, who's the education coordinator here at the Art Museum, will hand you a microphone. Please don't start your question until the microphone is in hand so that we get that on the record. And uh, we'll have the audience respond to you. Who has a question? Um, we have two debaters who know a lot about contemporary art scene. And I wonder if each would venture a definition then of what is local art today, if you wish to define it, and, and what about global art? The do those categories make sense for you? What do local art and global art mean to you? And Becky, I'll start with you. So. Um, in my talk, I talked about art that is rooted in a place, in a shared um, aesthetic, mores, etc. A local can be a nation in some instances when you consider a global sphere. And what you need to be aware of is that there are not one local any longer that there are many locals, they're like nodal hubs, little places that artists, artists are connected to where they are and to each other, and from there they broadcast their work. And it's that in that broadcast is where I find the global. It is the connectedness that happens across time and space. And Nancy? Ditto. <laughs> But I think it's in some of my reflecting about this particular idea is the idea of forging some sort of a win-win with the Aspen Art Museum and regionally based artists. 
not only do regionally based artists reflect their sense of time and place, as every artist does wherever they're located, but to have that incorporated into a global program, like the Art Museum does so well, I think has a mastery in showing how the local and the global work hand in hand. So we're very fortunate in Aspen to have such a jewel of a museum, like the Art Museum, and we're also very fortunate to have such dynamically talented artists that live in the region. So that's what I think is one of the most dynamic communities, and that's the kind of community I want to live in. Do we have another question? Um, I was interested in what Steve and Eden were talking about. So can you perhaps make some comments in terms of climate change and local and global action? Um, the notion at one point was if each consumer became more responsible, it would make the difference. Other people argue you need national policy, you need international policy. What are your thoughts on the matter? So does it take a local or a global action to affect climate? Yeah, just thoughts on the matter, local <laughs> versus <laughs> global, question, in, in connection to climate change specifically. Do you feel like you have a question you can answer? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, um, they're, they're, it's codependent. And I, I've made... Um, I, I've, been, I've received a number of invitations to talk on, on some international platforms. And I've argued that what we can best do here is use Aspen as a lever to push on policy change at national and international levels. So um, what I agree with, I, I have no issue with what you said. They're, they're, uh, they um, work, in de uh, they're dependent upon one another. I don't know. Yeah, just closer to the mic next time and get us closer. Uh, I'd agree with Steve that both are essential. However, I believe that a global or even a, even a national policy has little impact if there's not individuals that are actually carrying them forward. So for example, if the government you know, came with a policy that said uh, nobody can now uh, keep their lights on past six o'clock in the afternoon, um, unless there was individuals that that, that believed that it was a good good thing to do, people would keep their lights on past six o'clock in the afternoon. Um, that might be a silly example, but the point is is that without individuals taking action on what they believe to be the right thing, whether because they think there's a consequence or not, action doesn't take place. Um, global warming doesn't stop at the roundabout, and what we do here is irrelevant unless everybody else is doing it as well. And it's the national policy that gives us more assurance that others will be doing what we're doing here. And one more rebuttal. I absolutely agree. And <laughs> um, if what, despite what the national policy is, it has no impact if on a, on a localized individual level, people aren't actually following through and taking action. You want to hear a couple more rebuttals? <laughs> Here's Steve Scadron. <laughs> what we do in Aspen on a local level is for the most part symbolic, and we hope our actions are emulated by others, and we have this good fortune here of attracting the type of um, individual who can influence opinion outside of our local borders. So, it's interdependent. Other questions for our panelists? Is the local more important than the global? Okay, I'm gonna try my hardest to put this into a question form. Um, there's this notion that in a global society that is so large and so technology-based and so dissolute from itself, 
that the idea of community has been lost, a sense of mutual values and uh, kinship has been lost. Um, do you think that is true? What can be done on the local and the global scale um, to rekindle and to find that reconnection with one another? Are we losing community and what can be done on the local and global scale to rekindle that? Well, I appreciate that question um, because I do think the only time we lose community is when we forget that we're completely connected, that we are one ecosystem w globally. However, we have to remind ourselves through our daily activity, and I think that that is where every local constituency can stimulate morals, memory, um, activities that do bring us together. That, in fact, feeds the whole again, as only quantum physics has explained to us time and time again. So I really think that the only issue is that we have forgotten who we are and we try to act as individuals and that's against our own nature. So I'd like to talk about individual agency in making a decision to um, connect or not to connect because it's very easy to be connected uh, virtually. And the, what I find is I watch pe so many people, so people come into the museum all the time and they aren't looking at the art, they're looking at the four inches in their hand. And they, if they are trying to record what they're doing, they don't look at the art, they snap pictures. And so what I would like to say is that in, in that morass that is our, our interconnected, very in, interconnected world, that we have to remember and we have to be reminded to actually physically and emotionally connect. And I think that part of community is an emotional connection. It is a connection to our past. It is a connection, passion for our ideas. We have an aesthetic perspective. And that comes from connecting one by one by one to other individuals. Yes, it happens virtually, but and let, there's some real-time interaction that has to happen, that has to be face-to-face. -face. It's part of being human. You know, it's this thing about a human touch um, is 10 times more effective than a drug in uh, preventing, in re relieving pain. It's that sort of thing that, the, that there still is the need for interpersonal relationship in real time, face to face, in a physical location. Thank you, Becky. Eden, you have something else? Yeah. Um, I believe that the backbone of, of kind of rekindling community is, is based in two things. The first is exactly what you were talking about, and I would define that as presence, and just being present with, with our surroundings and with what's happening, and, and to me that is hyper-local. That's not even talking about a region, but on an individual, local person level. And then the second part is service, and, and just kind of awareness of, of, of what I can do to be of service to, to those around me. Uh, I found it a lot easier as a father to think outside of myself because it's a necessity at that point. Um, and, but what I find is that that feeling of connection and community comes back to me when I'm acting from a place of service rather than uh, a place of, of kind of striving for. Steve, are we losing community? Uh, I ask this question all the time from the council table and I've, I've posed that I've asked, are we one community, or have we become a collection of neighborhoods in Aspen, each looking out for individual interests? Because it's fascinating. It's fascinating um, sitting on this side of the table, as uh, taking my turn in community service to watch the evolution of to watch the evolution of community. Um, and one interesting part of that is uh, an issue that people are so worked up about; they come out in force but only when it affects their neighborhood. When the same issue affects people on this side of town, the people who are vehemently arguing here don't show up. Um, so I, I ask this question all the time. Um, I, quite frankly, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to answer it. So I have a question for each of the panelists. 
and it's a big question, but I'm looking for a single answer, <laughs> okay? So the, the question is, what do you most value? What's the one thing you most value? And how does, if you're arguing for the local or the global, foster or inform that one thing? Let's just go down the table. Nancy, I'll start with you. You're saying just in general, the one thing. I guess the one thing that I value the most is how incredibly available the muse is to everyone, whatever that muse is. I think that the generosity of the collective consciousness of the world is so available that you can tap into it and express yourself creatively in any way you wish. So you can pull from the global, act local, and feed the global yet again. Uh, I think um, authenticity. And I think um, when uh, uh, growing out of authenticity um, comes the kind of community or honest values that result in community. For me, it's this planet, the Earth, um, and how incredible this place is and how much I appreciate being alive, which informs basically all of my actions. It's the, I, I, I feel like it wouldn't be right of me to live only thinking about myself being able to enjoy this. I want those that don't yet have a voice because they're not yet alive to be able to enjoy it. Wow. <laughs> I would say generosity, the generosity that allows connectedness across diversity, uh, that allows us all to come together, um, to have discussions like this, to have diverse and uh, divergent ideas and to listen and respect both sides of the argument, to be generous in how we do it. Do we have another audience question? I think we have time for two more, as one brave soul thinks of the last question I'm gonna pose one as well. I think I heard from both sides that you could have one without the other. Go Hi. ahead, go ahead, sir. Um, forgive me, but I have a rhetorical question, and it sort of criticizes the whole form of this argument, which is it's really just another, it, I'm not trying to demean it, but it's, it's sort of an example of dualism, which is sort of an old and um, tired sort of philosophy in a way to put this, um, this set of ideas into one side and another side. And so I just wanted to ask the members of the board who are asked to be part of this, how you feel about that? Because, you know, if someone asked me, are you a local artist? Can you keep the microphone in front of you? Uh, sorry, you. if someone asked me, am I a local artist? I say yes. If they ask me, are you a global artist? I say yes. So, I mean, I mean you can argue about the local and the global, but as an individual, you're both, just sort of by definition. So what is your sort of attitude to that? And I, and I just want to reiterate this whole idea of the dualism thing, which is really sort of an old um, way to look at problems, especially human problems. And I think it has limitations, so. Thank you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna rephrase that, or I'm gonna pose into one question, which I think, correct me if I'm not getting this right, can you even only be local or global? And we'll go back down the table the other way. Um, this is why I, I talked about Lucy Lepard and uh, Kwame Apia and this idea of uh, re being rooted somewhere and reach someplace else. I think there's a relationship and inter interconnected, there's a relationship between the two. I think that, that you have to have lo you have to be local, you have to be rooted somewhere. As an artist, you know what your studio practice is about, what you, what you know something about where you're aiming to go and how you, the means that you're going to follow uh, to make, make an artwork. That is being rooted, that is being local. 
that artwork then is projected out into the world and how it is projected and received is a, can be a global or a local issue. I think the uh, member from the audience brings up a very good point. Um, uh, however, I, I would say that there seems to be, uh, in, in kind of especially in the new age today, um, this real fear of, of duality or of, of kind of looking at, at two sides of something. And while I see where that view comes from, I, I believe that to exist on this planet today, there, we have to kind of accept duality to a certain level in that the fact that we are alive and, and experiencing ourselves is almost a duality in itself in that we're not just, you know, it's not just everything is being. We are experiencing ourselves being, so we already have created a separation from kind of the unification of consciousness in a way. So I think that, that claiming that, that there is um, kind of there is this value in, in looking at both sides and in this duality is actually something that, that I, th I think has, has value and roots. And I would, I would say that for me, that, um, that I, I think that Steve brought up a very good, good argument about, about the value of both. And yet, I just so strongly believe that without starting with the individual, without starting with that, the unit, there is, no, there is no community, there is no society, there is no world without the individual first. And so starting kind of, as we say in permaculture, in that zone zero, in, in kind of the individual, or in that really hyper-local, uh, to me is, is, is important, and a, a great place to start. I, I don't disagree with you, and I just want to clarify that uh, the question that was put before us, we are not uh, debating what is more important, local or global. That was not the question. The question was, is the local more important than global? And my first point was this notion of vagueness. And I think I uh, concur with your comments. Um, yeah. Well, Andrew, I want to thank you for making my point again, um, so succinctly. Um, because anyone who knows me knows that for many years, everyone who introduces me as a local artist, I go, oh, excuse me, <laughs> excuse me, I am not a local artist. I'm an American artist that works in Old Snowmass. Um, so I completely agree with your premise. I, uh, I too believe there's no duality. I think that that's a man-made invention because there is no difference between the one and the all. Staff will now pass out ballots with the question, if you don't have one. Is the local more important than the global? You will cast your ballot, please just one. Is there a bucket or a... All right, look around for collectors. So since you guys are sitting at the museum uh, and we're counting the ballots, I'm going to respond to Andrew's question. Um, I think it's actually really interesting to live in a time where there are very few boundaries, right? People get to self-identify. My daughter is applying to boarding school and she gets to choose her personal pronoun, right? Things that like... <laughs> I don't know, I never even would have thought about when I was 14 years old. Um, you can curate your own tennis shoes. You can basically choose anything that you want, right? Your individuality is uh, highlighted, okay? So I actually think it's much more interesting to 
try and exist within a completely forced binary of uh, pro and con. So, you know, if you saw Steve Scadron as one of the participants, um, probably you would have thought he would be arguing, you know, that the local is more important than the global. And the idea of doing this is to specifically address taboo topics, things that make people uncomfortable, um, and try and understand that that's one of the things we do at the museum, is to let people find some kind of comfort in uncertainty. So, of course, it was introduced as the idea that it's a 19th century model. We're in the 21st century. It's going to feel archaic, but sometimes that's what museums do. We look at the past to understand who we are in the current and in the future. You have the answer? For those of you who were here at the first great debate, I think you'll remember that it came down to an exact tie. This is nowhere near that. Is the local more important than the global? We had 10 people vote yes and 30 vote no. No sweeps it. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Look for the global, so we sit around.